Why are Intel processors not present in mobile phone? Intel's decision to pass on making chips for Apple's iPhone way back in 2007 now looks like a huge mistake. Former CEO Paul Ottolini admitted as much. Intel has now bailed out of the smartphone chip market while Apple is flying high with its iPhones based on its own A-series chips. So, what happened? The decision to bail out of smartphone chips ends close to a decade of futility with Intel trying to outmaneuver rivals like Qualcomm, Apple, and Samsung, which make mobile chips based on technology licensed for ARM, a company which now controls 99% market share in the manufacture of chips for smartphones. Although Intel spent years developing their mobile Atom processors, they were late to develop a modern low-power system on a chip, SOC. As a result, there are already several entrenched players when their first mobile phone processors were unveiled, so they've always been faced with steep competition from ARM-based chips, including Qualcomm and Samsung in the premium sector, and MediaTek as well as other Chinese manufacturers on the budget side of the market. Although Intel Atom chips appeared in a few smartphones, including the Asus Zenfone 2 and the Lenovo P90, ultimately Intel failed to gain any real traction. There simply wasn't a competitive advantage for smartphone manufacturers to choose Atom over ARM, as Android runs on both. Missing the boat The Atom smartphone chip cancellations pull the curtain back on an ugly past in which Intel shot itself in the foot with bad timing and ill-advised executive decisions. In early to mid-2000s, under then-CEO Craig Barrett, Intel started laying down an end-to-end -end mobile and networking strategy which included making networking equipment and mobile phone chips. In a 2005 interview, Barrett insisted Intel's mobile chips were popular with mobile phone makers. Intel's ARM-based strong-arm processors were a big part of its strategy, and the biggest competition at the time came from Texas Instruments' OMAP processors. But Odellini, who replaced Barrett, de-emphasized the mobile and networking strategy to focus on Intel's core PC market. Intel's PC offerings then came under pressure when AMD became a serious competitor with innovative chips. As new CEO in 2006, Ottolini made one of his big announcements when Apple switched Macs to Intel's x86 chips. From the power PC to Intel processors, and we are going to begin it for you now and for our customers next year. Intel in late 2006 sold the strong arm assets to Marvel for US $600 million. Two major factors later changed Intel's view on smartphones, the success of the iPhone and how it cut into PC sales. Tablets then began to hurt PC sales after the iPad was released in 2010. Is there room for a third category of device in the middle? The iPad and those devices did not use x86 chips. So? Let me show it to you now. This is what it looks like. That painted a picture of, oh, there's a market that's not a PC market? Remember the MID? Intel started retooling the Atom processor, designed originally for netbooks, to fit into internet-connected devices like mobile internet devices, MIDs, which were small screen computers with web browsing capability. Intel developed some prototype phablet-like devices based on a chip called Menlo, which was announced in 2008, but MIDs never took off. At the time, Intel viewed the MID as a smaller version of a PC that was internet-enabled. It couldn't perceive growth in the smartphone market because of mobile broadband connectivity issues and limits at the time. PCs are Intel's expertise, that's their worldview, and that kept them from seeing the phone as a client. The Intel smartphone chip called Moorestown was announced in 2010, but was too power-hungry for smartphones. The first Intel-based smartphone was Lava's Zolo X900, which was first released in April 2012 in India. While Intel struggled to make a competitive mobile processor, its failure in mobile software also burned the company. Intel in 2007 started working on Linux-based Moblin, which was merged with Nokia's Maymo, into a new OS called Mego in 2010. 
the OS was then merged with Limo into what is now called Tizen. Intel ultimately warmed up to Android in 2011, but it was too late. Too late for Android. Intel was trying to force its OS down customers' throats as Apple and Google were taking over the market. They had a chance to jump ship to go with Android, but they didn't do it. Intel also spent billions retooling chip manufacturing with mobile in mind, with the focus being on low-power chips instead of performance. The goal was to catch up with ARM and power efficiency by using its manufacturing advantage. The investments didn't advance Intel into the mobile market, but have helped bring longer battery life to laptops and tablets. Another big mistake was the high priority placed on the now declining tablet market. Intel CEO Brian, who replaced Ottolini, set a goal to ship 40 million tablet chips by the end of 2014, using heavy subsidies on Atom chips. The company shipped 46 million chips that year, but the effort hurt Intel's profitability, and Brian decided not to repeat that strategy with smartphones. Intel discontinued one mobile project almost a decade ago, only to regret it. Meanwhile, Intel's rival, ARM, whose chips are packaged and sold through companies such as Qualcomm, Samsung, and Texas Instruments, has gained nearly 90% of the cell phone processor market. Today, a majority of mobile phones, tablets, wireless routers, digital media players, handheld gaming consoles, and many computer peripherals are powered by an ARM microprocessor. When the iPhone and iPad were being developed, Intel management made the decision that such a margin was not achievable for such small, low-cost processors. They also argued that the cloud processing required for many smartphone apps would mean that Intel would sell more server chips for every smartphone that was sold. So it would all work out, and Intel would still make money on the smartphone revolution. Or at least, that was the strategy. I would like to tell you much more about what happened next, but I think you can figure it out from the fact that ARM-based processors now dominate smartphones and tablets, and Intel's stock is lower than it was 17 years ago. This pattern has been well documented before. Those who are ignorant of history are doomed to repeat its mistakes. Those who know tech history still apparently are doomed to repeat the mistakes. Digital Equipment Corporation disrupted IBM. Sun Microsystems disrupted digital equipment. Intel disrupted Sun. And now, ARM has disrupted Intel. Big companies always shrug off challengers by lower cost, lower performance products that have lower profit margins, and even mock them for entering the market at all. Then, one day, surprise. They aren't just eating crumbs that fall from the table, but instead are sitting at the table and demanding a big share of the pie. Intel still has a larger piece of the pie when it comes to computer and laptop processors, so we won't see Intel going anywhere. But Intel has definitely missed the boat when it comes to mobile processors, and since have completely exited the mobile chip market. So we will leave it right there. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you next time.